Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I have Rogerio Marx, and he is a very intelligent man specializing in philosophy and how to think. He rolls with the idea that we used to collect things and now we collect wisdom. And that is the route to being happier. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. And I'm excited to have a great conversation, my man. Thank you for having me, Justin. It's uh, really a pleasure being here. Uh, and I'm stoked to uh, engage in conversation with you. So first, let's kind of go down the avenue of your lifestyle. Tell me a bit about how you form your days and what's the key to you feeling good? Okay, so a while back, like two years before, I used to drive a lot. I had a car, always uh, driving, and uh, I didn't have a very active lifestyle. Uh, it wasn't very uh, satisfying, I might say, but I didn't know that at the time because my lifestyle at the time was kind of part of the landscape. And then eventually I got uh, um, fed up with having to repair the car all the time. Uh, I didn't want immediately to invest in a new car, so I just sent it to be crushed and uh, picked up my bicycle. Since my work uh, place is six, uh, five miles more or less, or six kilometers from my home, uh, I've been driving for one year and, uh, and a half, cycling, I mean, uh, for one year and a half uh, to work. So uh, basically 10 miles each day of, uh, of the week. And it has had a tremendous impact on my, my fitness uh, without having even to invest in, in something, you know, uh, very fitness related, uh, like uh, going to a gym, a gym subscription, for example. Uh, I haven't been been having a gym sub subscription. Right. I've heard a statistic that speaks on humans who bike on average over eight miles a week. I might be inaccurate in that, but along those lines, you live longer. And cycling is one of those hobbies that maybe since it's for work, it's not as much of a hobby, but a necessity. But in the same way, you are benefiting yourself by getting your blood flowing and you're saving money, you're getting fresh air, you're getting sunlight, and there's a plethora of benefits from cycling. I am aiming to break one of my records and bike 100 miles in one day this summer which will be extremely hard. I'm setting a big goal for a reason. And it's okay if I don't get that. If I get 75 miles, I'll be happy, but I'm going for 100. And just cycling in general, I love being outside and getting the blood flowing. It, that's a very intelligent solution that you came to. You're, you're helping your health, you're saving your pockets. A win-win. Yeah, and also it benefits the environment as well. It's one less car uh, polluting in, in my city. So it's amazing. This also happens uh, simultaneously with my city uh, creating bike lanes. So uh, everything fell into place very nicely. You know, I, I really was fortunate for all this to happen at the same time. Another thing that was really interesting was I realized that I can read like 10 audiobooks at, in the time that I, I use to complete one conventional book, you know, either print or ebook. So I, I realized and learned this about myself that I'm an auditory learner. I, I learn okay with uh, listening to someone reading to me. So basically, I've read dozens of audiobooks in the past year more or less and some of the first audiobooks that i read were um, were quite recent ones one was james clear's atomic habits and the other was uh, uh, martin meadows self-discipline these two books they agreed mostly with each other in a lot of things they complemented each other for me and one concept that both of them talked about was about keystone habits. So habits that are foundational to build other uh, desirable and positive 
and enriching habits for our lifestyle. And I realized that unintentionally, I had created the Keystone habit with my uh, cycling to work uh, activity. That's basically, even if it rains, downpours and whatever, I still go in my bicycle to work. Because, well, it doesn't even matter because I, I have a shower at my workplace and at my home. Uh, if I arrive drenched, I just uh, take a shower and change. Uh, and it's all good. Um, other habits that were formed thanks to this one was really this uh, habit of, uh, how will I say it, stacking on to this habit of cycling, the habit of reading audiobooks while I'm cycling. So since I'm not dealing with uh, complex traffic because I'm going through the bike lanes, I can kind of relax and listen to what the, the audio, audiobook is, is telling me. Um, some audiobooks uh, I've read for many, many times. For example, one of the first philosophy audiobooks that I've read was Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. And I probably have read th that one 15 or 20 times. So <laughs> you, might, you might be kind of, wow, why, why read a book so many times? Uh, <laughs> doesn't that seem strange to you? And I, I truly understand why you would read a book multiple times. But as someone who doesn't read, it would seem strange because the thoughts, the ideas that are gathered from reading, unless you write them down and capture them, they're in and out of your mind quite quickly. So I will will soon find myself coming back to some of the favorite books. I have not yet read books or listened to audiobooks multiple times, but the, the information can always be learned in a new way and you can take different things from it because although it may be the same words and ideas, the way that you perceive those words and ideas will shift due to your personal experiences and your state of mind on that current day. So uh, there is going to be certain books and lessons that you listen to at a certain age or a point in your life that brought you a, a meaning, but then you re-listen to it in a different point and a brand new lesson can be taken from it. And that's a very interesting concept, how the mind is never the same. You could step into a river and you're never going to step into that same exact water, that same river. Those water is constantly flowing and that is the same with our minds. We can learn, we should always be aiming to learn, but it's never going to be exactly the same. And that is a beautiful aspect of life and testing your curiosities. When you put yourself out there and attempt new things, who knows what's going to happen, but you're going to be fulfilled with new, fresh experiences. And that is a big piece of the meaning that we all should have. It, a stagnant, comfortable, consistent, consistent in a way where you're not feeling new emotions, new lessons. Inside the comfort zone. Exactly. That comfort zone is just where things die. You want to expand upon what you're doing every day. And by consuming that same book, it might seem like you're staying in the comfort zone, but it's actually the opposite because you understand the depth of a idea and a concept. And that teaches you brand new things over time. Yeah. Uh, in, to complement this idea of, of reading books uh, multiple times, I have a, a, a story of an, the opposite happening. So a friend of mine, he, he quite likes Jordan Peterson uh, and his ideas. He, he read his first uh, book on the 12 rules for life. Uh, I think it's called the 12 rules for order or something like that. 
not not really remembering the, the title of the book but he said he told me that he read it once it was great for his lifestyle and his life shortly after he only read it once and didn't repeat the reading and then he said that he, he felt that the benefit was short-lived <laughs> so I found that really telling you know re really informative for me uh, in contrast myself uh, with my example of reading Marcus Aurelius 15 times reading uh, the body of work of Rumi like four or five times which is really massive it's a 10 hours audiobook um, also uh, many other uh, uh, audiobooks on philosophy like Seneca's uh, moral letters to Lucilius which have so much uh, wisdom so much accumulated uh, great ideas and fine thinking um, I find that you can all, you, your brain is kind of rejecting at first new ideas you know your brain has some some kind of inertia in it uh, and it, it's naturally skeptic to new ideas even if you're you're totally uh, open and engaged with the book your brain still will will do that thing of you know in within one year out the other at the first time uh, this happens inside our brains because our neurons take a while to uh, form and strengthen connections so for for my, me to integrate marcus aurelius's th thinking for example in a, a substantial way i really needed to listen to him a lot of times and i'm probably going to listen to him more times uh, when i'm in <laughs> when i'm after reading some books that i'm reading right now i'm, I'm going to go back to it um, because i know that the brain works like that and the mind is uh, foundationed on the brain and uh, the neurons they really need to form these connections and, and strengthen them and we can only strengthen connections by repeating by practicing by training uh, by, by doing th these things uh, daily uh, if we want to shift our mindset from a negative mindset that's that is kind of making us feel anxious all the time or, or even uh, leading us to uh, sometimes depression uh, we better uh, intentional be very intentional about seeking uh, positive ideas and making our information diet much more based on, on positive uh, ideas that uh, help us uh, move move forward and upward you know what you consume is what you put out and that is completely true with my experience if I'm consuming just divisive ideas or things that are not challenging my current contingencies, then I begin to stay stagnant. And that's where that comfort zone idea comes back into things. We have to be consuming new ideas. And at first, like you said, our brain may have that dissonance where it doesn't want to accept or even ponder upon something that might be a bit aggressive to the current comfort zone. And as we break the barriers of that box of comfort, then we begin to have new, fresh ideas and our frequency can be changed. Whether you're at a high frequency, and you're allowing divisive media to be consumed, you will quickly feel your, your energy levels be, be taken down. And on the other note, if you're consuming things that are poor, and then you can shift that. You start listening to Marcus Aurelius and ideas that are going to support your growth, you can feel the energy become so unique and it, it's similar to going on a hike and being out in nature absorbing sunshine and allowing thoughts to flow when you put yourself into the right situations your body will reward yourself with the correct feelings whether it's good or bad that's up to you to figure out but first, you got to be aware. And by noticing how your body's feeling and how your brain is operating, then you can reflect and 
ask yourself, is that type of content good for me? Is it making me feel better or is it encouraging uh, self-sabotage and negative thoughts? So I love that it all begins with awareness. And once you notice things, then we can work to adjust and pivot and, and grow. Yeah, awareness <clears throat> and the intentional uh, use of reason. If you uh, make it a point of uh, saying to yourself, enough of this, when we are talking about mindlessness, when we are talking about uh, irrational thoughts, you know, negative thoughts against us that are self-sabotaging, they are never rational. They are always irrational, you know. They are, because they, they have no justification, they have no um, solid back, uh, foundations to stand upon. They, they are only there because they are, there is no light shining upon them. If you start shining a light upon your thoughts, the, you know, these kinds of uh, uh, critters of, of our thoughts, they, they scuttle away. They, they, they can't stand the, the light of, of consciousness shining upon them. And this is one of the uh, outstanding uh, practices that uh, I've adopted, uh, which is to think uh, uh, at the end of my day about my thoughts, to think about what I've, what are, what, what choices I've been doing uh, during the, the past day. Um, if I have difficult choices for the next day that I know I'm going to make, or even if something, some difficult choice arises, and I, I try to make it a point of myself to uh, try to see this choice outside of myself in a third person view. This is a, a mental technique to uh, stay away from the emotions, to try to uh, uh, remove yourself from the emotions that are, are biasing you. They, they, are, they will uh, uh, ruin your, your reasoning, your, your rational thoughts. So you want to let them, they will work whether you want them to work or not, but you must make it a point to um, not let them influence you in any way or minimize their influence. Another mental technique that uh, people like Marcus Aurelius and other Stoics used was to choose a very wise person that you admire. I, for example, uh, chose Marcus Aurelius or Seneca or Musonius Rufus. When I have a very difficult choice in life, I think to myself, well, if Marcus Aurelius was here in my place, what kind of choice will, would he do, considering his wisdom? This is another way to uh, try to put reason in, in place uh, to, to take, take this choice, take the reins of our life and not let uh, mindless emotion and irrational thoughts uh, sway us. So this is, this is some, some, some of the richness that I have acquired. It's, it's basically practical wisdom from ancient times. Some people know it and practice it nowadays, but until, until I picked up Marcus Aurelius and other philosophers, I was totally unaware of these kinds of practices. Uh, honestly, I was positive, positively surprised because philosophy uh, in, in these times of Marcus Aurelius, uh, Marcus Aurelius and others, uh, it didn't only consist on uh, philosophical wisdom, on the theory, you know, uh, nice thoughts, but it also consisted on practical wisdom. So practical uh, things that you can do every single day, habits that you can form that will improve your life drastically in such a way that if you apply these things religiously uh, in a matter of 10 days you uh, in the words of Marcus Aurelius you can be you can move from being seen by others like a kind of a beast to a kind of a god that they will start even to res to respect and revere just because you're you're doing making a point of stopping with the irrationality uh, stop stop letting irrationality uh, condition your life, uh, not, not letting mindless and irrational thoughts uh, control uh, us like puppets. To really focus on reason, it's not an easy endeavor because the emotions that we have, especially in moments of quick 
quick irrationality, whether it's in, in traffic or someone rear ends you or someone comes up to you and starts yelling and you, it's, it's a battle within yourself to remember the philosophy that one has studied rather than allowing our emotions to fire us up and we become that irrational human that we are aiming not to be these habits that we must perform, it's a compounding act. Nothing great happens overnight. So we must understand that consistency, awareness, and reason, those are three of the fundamental aspects to being a better human. And when you apply what you're learning, it allows you to adapt and pivot between your your past self and grow into the person you aim to be but some of these habits that personally help me be more reasonable it's almost as if if i don't express my emotions in a positive way what i mean by that is going to the gym if i don't go to the gym and at least lift some weights and express some of that energy, it gets bundled up. And when someone calls me a name or someone beeps at me, it is so bundled up that my irrational self just blows out. And rather, if I have gone to the gym and I'm eating the right food, I've listened to a Marcus Aurelius meditation or the, the, the lessons of Seneca, whatever information I'm consuming, it transpires into what I put out. And if I've watched the news, rather than listening to some philosophy, go, let's say I watched the news, I didn't go to the gym, and I had some junk food rather than some correct nutritional, natural glucose and energy, then I'm going to be so much more at the will of my emotions and my irrational, irrational ability. And on the other hand, when I do the right things, I can take a step back and the emotions still arise, but I'm aware of them much sooner. And I can ask, do I really want to react or do I want to respond like Marcus Aurelius would? And it's this battle of, it's constant. If you are off one day, almost everything you've studied and learned can, can feel like you're disconnected from it. So it's, we must be consistent with what we consume and how we present ourselves. Going back to what you said, you just lead by example and people will begin to look at you like, I want what he has. What does he have? And it's the consistent consumption of the right ingredients that slowly turn you into a next level, a more intelligent, reasonable, functionable being that is actually being the light within the darkness. I speak a lot about polarities because I do believe in faith and it's nice to have faith but not everything is good and there's a reason for that because the bad makes you appreciate the good if there was no bad what is good so now we can understand oh wow that's horrible but there's so much blessings around us now my eyes have been kind of unraveled to the the natural gratitude that i should have it's very interesting how our mind can play these tricks and how we can actually gather our situations and our actions in a manner that is going to support the healthy mind and the correct thought process rather than that corruption of irrational irrationality. Yeah, you, you brought up a very important point as well, which is to express gratitude, to make gratitude um, something that is a habit, you know. You, even if uh, someone rear ends you and you get out of the car and check what's, what happened, uh, remember firstly that 
the the best uh, cure for anger is uh, delay you know just don't react immediately delay and then uh, be appreciative about the other person being uh, calm about the situation as well you kind of um, diffuse the situation if you will because the other person might be also uh, with the, her, their internal emotional spring all wound up as well just ready to fire uh, and if you you well the first things that people say in a situation like that they really make an impact they really matter a lot and if you uh, approach the person with kindness even if the person is initially um, kind of hostile the the best remedy to to uh, anger is kindness the best remedy to to uh, a sense of vengeance is kindness so ki kindness and gratitude is really very important um, other things that that uh, are really important in in my lifestyle in what I do and uh, I find I I think it's I recommend everyone to try it is before this phase of my life during 10 years I tried to integrate into my my daily habits the habit of meditating and I, I I failed miserably during during the most of the, the part of the last 10 years uh, because well th it started with me frequenting some yoga groups and and other people that meditate but I wanted to do it by myself so it's I don't depend on anything else than myself I only managed to implement this now because of the keystone habits that I was forming so by cycling to work a cold shower afterwards and cold showers uh, we can get into that in a bit they don't come easy but they they're rewarding and then after the cold shower uh, 10 to 10 minutes meditation and I'm increasing it gradually um, meditating is really really v very valuable because it's kind of uh, you stepping outside your home and checking the weather and if you don't step outside, you have no idea what to wear, what clothes to wear, what, how to deal with the weather, etc. You have no idea what's going on. And if you stop and um, numb all your senses for a, a little bit, uh, be in a quiet room, nothing going on, focus on your breath at, at the beginning, and you'll start to notice your your mind without your you, without you wanting it or without your voluntary um, decision it starts it will continue producing thoughts which will for people that don't have never meditated it will come more or less as surprising or as a shock because they'll find that there's something going on you know background processes as if you if we we want to use a, a software analogy you know background processes going on without our our um, our consent uh, in our in the software in the operative system of our mind we can only fully grasp uh, or better grasp this if we meditate uh, and if we do so as a habit uh, daily uh, it, the benefits will start to compound you will start to see that your stress levels will drop by themselves just with meditation as they dropped with the exercise so it's a complementary activity to, with a, a different uh, approach to reduce stress levels. And you will also uh, build your uh, self-knowledge, which is such an important thing of all these philosophers that, that I've read until now. Every single one of them stresses the importance of self-knowledge. Plato, uh, the, uh, Aristotle, uh, the, all the Stoics, uh, Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu uh, Confucius, uh, the Hindu uh, sages, they all stress that it's really important for you to know yourself. Uh, even in the uh, uh, old temple of uh, Delphi, they wrote the words, uh, know thyself, uh, which was r way older than even these uh, ancient Greek philosophers that I've mentioned. So this is an, an idea, it's a, a piece of wisdom that's really old. And also I, I would like to stress the importance that, okay, we can uh, learn from these, these wise people, but at the end of the day, what matters is that these teachings help you find the goodness within yourself. 
because if you connect with the goodness within yourself uh, uh, just like Marcus Aurelius mentioned it's a, a, a spring that's constantly welling up with goodness if you let it if you find a way to unpollute whatever is covering it whatever is 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 uh, in, impeding it to well up then you can start connecting with yourself at a, a deep level that helps you realize much more intuitively what is the best course of action at any given point of your day at any given moment because you you will in a sense i, I can't explain this really concretely or scientifically but you'll start to feel positive about your the things that you do and you start to feel um, more certainty in what you are doing if you see someone needing help you will go and help that person uh, provided that that nothing impedes you you will go and do so you will be the good samaritan uh, just to a reference uh, 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 one of my, fam my most favorite uh, Bible passages um, you will go and help that person that's in need because it's the right thing to do and you know it's the right thing to do because you are already connected with the goodness in yourself and this is a lot of work to get to there oh right it doesn't happen overnight to understand or fathom what is natural it's taken me a long time of searching within myself to let the most innate emotions and wishes for goodness of everyone to transpire back let's say a couple years ago when i was distracted and there was no consistency in my effort to become a better more intelligent good human being things were very unnatural it's i love the differentiation between your ego and your natural self i think that's what we're getting at is when you meditate don't don't be hard on yourself because thoughts are still flowing people get it twisted and they think meditation is supposed to be blank you're, you're still going to have thoughts. It's the act of noticing your thoughts. You're, you're sitting down and you're aware of all of the different emotions and ideas going through your head. And that is the slow daily process that will allow you to get clear with your truest self. Because my ego, we all have the ego. It's the the part of you that is jealous of others, that doesn't wish goodness upon everyone, the part of you that holds grudges and that says, oh, but why are they there and I'm here? The comparing yourself to other people, that is all egotistical action. But when you get more close in depth with your true self, you become aware that we're all connected in this weird, innate way that you are so much more likely to do good things and for them to come so naturally. Good things are not forced. When you're actually wishing the best for everyone, there's just a powerful inclination to do good. It, like you said, whatever example, if someone's fallen or someone needs help, you cannot think of anything but helping that person. It is so natural in your truest being that that's the only option. There's not a second guessing of do I help this person or do I not? And if there is, that's your freaking ego. It's not your truest self. And if you cannot relate to what I'm saying right now, do not feel bad or astray because these type of emotions take a long time of consistent knowing yourself to become aware of, whether it's the exercising, which I relate to as a active meditation. When I exercise, it's just as I'm meditating, but I'm not sitting down with my eyes closed 
it's still so similar. I'm not doing anything that is unnatural. It's all this, this thoughts and the ideas we're speaking of. I just urge you, if you've never tried it before, give it a try. Do not be so closed off that you say, wishy-washy, no way, that's, that's not happening. Try new things and you'll unravel your truest self. But the, the biggest point I want to nail home is there is a big difference between your ego and your natural self. And it is your job to really investigate further. Am I just being egotistical? Is that how I live my whole life? A fuck, a ego? Is that all I am? Or is there something in the middle, two sides of you, going back to the good and bad? your ego and your higher self. The polarities are so necessary. Yeah, I think what you said is beautiful and, and I, I hope it, it inspires people. I, w I was feeling inspired by what, why, what you were saying. Um, <clears throat> I would also like to add that we can view our, our true self as what the ancients would call the soul. Marcus Aurelius described it and the ancient Greeks as a perfect sphere without any, any uh, imperfections, without any flaws. And then the, uh, the irrationality, you know, the uh, unsound reasoning and emotions that drive us astray. It's kind of like a layer of grime that, that in encrusts, that's encrusting on top of it. We need to clean it, you know, and we, we have several tools to clean our, our true self. One of these is, of course, meditation. And uh, I, I can't go into all the details of why, in scientific terms, uh, meditation is very useful to improve ourselves. But th there's uh, uh, scientific studies done on it. They found that stress levels decrease which is a, an indirect way of saying that likely the, the irrationality is taking less of a, a, a seat in the driver's seat uh, for these people. Uh, if, if you can uh, uh, calm yourself with several tools, be it meditation, uh, lifting, as you've mentioned, which is an active meditation. Some people enjoy dancing, some people like swimming. Uh, I also enjoy hiking in nature in, in, in a forest uh, near my, my home. It, it uh, helps uh, calm down the, this superficial self, the ego, uh, so that the real self be beneath can shine better, can be more visible, and you can know yourself more profoundly. So it depends on, on each person's taste, of course. Uh, maybe meditation sitting in a lotus position or a seiza position is not for everyone. But if people already have keystone habit, habits uh, that allow them to unwind and get in touch with themselves, even if they're doing something physical or active, that's way better than the, being a couch potato consuming television and news and whatever i i must say that for like two years now i i've already dispensed with my my television i i don't consume any, any television for many months now uh, it also really helps me a lot because so much of what we see in the news is not reason it, it doesn't have rationality it's a lot of um, content that is a tailor that is uh, designed to build outrage in people, to make them feel bad about themselves, to make them feel enraged about a certain group in society. Uh, where will this lead in the long term? It's, it's not sustainable. Uh, we have to uh, realize what's going on, uh, what, what kind of information diet we are making be it in television or in social media, with uh, uh, content that is uh, irrational, that's not s solidly uh, based on something uh, very uh, well-grounded. 
uh, if something is causing you outrage and, and making you uh, feel uncontrolled, pause. Because something or someone is pulling your strings. Okay? And Siddhartha, which was one of the greatest uh, uh, wise persons that I've had the fortune to study, and I'm still studying, he said that attachment leads to suffering. And this, this, atta this attaching, attachment can be viewed as well as a sort of strings that are, are making us a puppet. The analogy of having your strings being pulled, that sums up so much of what is going on with today's society. But with those people that are pulling strings with the root, the root idea, the goal for them is to cause irrationality. And like you said, we must take a step back and think, where is this going to lead us? What is the big vision of these string pullers? And that brings me to the polarities. So if there are people pulling strings, taking advantage of the technology, the ability to reach the entire world, we, me and you, also have the power to create a reach and engage with people in the opposite manner, to bring reason to humans and to guide them to find their inner self rather than being that egotistical irrationality all the time, we have this amazing opportunity to change lives in a way where we show them, hey, whatever habits you truly enjoy, whether it is the meditation, the biking, the walking in nature, the swimming, the weightlifting, there are so the journaling is a, a amazing one. Organization of your higher self. Getting that true reason out and in a manner where you can reread what your highest self has created. And journaling is one of my favorites because there's a balance. Our physical bodies get tired. So you can go to the gym and that will be helpful, but if going to the gym is your only avenue of reaching your higher self, you, you might figure out, hey, I kind of want that feeling more, but my body's tired. How do I do it? Well, now we go into reading and journaling and meditating and even cleaning your house. I'm a big fan of how your environment how your workspace is, if my office was disgusting and dusty, I would not feel so nearly capable of having a high level conversation. That's just one of those things behind the scenes that I think people can benefit from. Be aware of the people you're speaking with. Do you feel more energy after you leave? Or do you feel drained after hanging out with a certain person? Does all this person do complain about how hard life is? Or are they looking at challenges, speaking about them with an open mind, saying, like you referenced earlier, now you're not fixing your car? What a odd coincidence that the bike lanes were created just as you started biking. I don't believe in coincidences. I think looking at the whole world with a lens that a challenge, a mishap, a mistake, let's pivot and figure out what can be taken from that to benefit our highest self. And just this act of it's all in your head. It's so intriguing how powerful the way we perceive everything is. We all humans 
are perceiving constantly. And I love this idea. It's not the situation that happens. It's the individual's perception of the situation. Um, the same thing could happen to me and you. I could view it as a lesson. You could view it as something to complain about. It's so open-ended is our world. Yeah. And to build up on that uh, example that you just gave me about people uh, complaining to another, you know, uh, for example, imagine that two complainers meet and one complains to the other, the other gets drained and complains to the other, they both leave drained from the conversation. Because besides they, them listening to the other's complaint, their own minds is or going on with this war inside them. They're draining themselves because they're listening to the, the others complain and their own mind complaining that the other is complaining. So it's it it's, uh, has many levels of, of energy draining. But imagine if a sage, a master, a wise master meets a complainer. The complainer starts complaining to him. He smiles and responds with kindness and has patience to listen to him. He even practices uh, when a thing that I value a lot, which is active listening. When you, when you make it a point of converse, conversing with someone else and trying to get inside their understanding, to, to try to view the world in, in their words as they are speaking, you, you start to get connected with the other person and only with connection can you help that person find a way to get out of that vicious cycle, to, to start uh, transcending the, whatever is the origin of those complaints. Because for sure complaining won't, won't solve it, because it's wasting energy that isn't being used at designing solutions you know if, if we have a problem in life and it has no solution because for example someone dear to us died death has no solution we can grieve all our hearts out the person won't come back we we need to uh, confront with this this situation where the reality has shifted completely and there is nothing we can do unless we do something positive about it that helps us move on uh, preserving that person's memory for example if well in the other uh, in the other uh, extreme if you have a problem that has a solution why are you complaining instead of finding a solution for it you know it's either way it's kind of like a, a flow diagram in either way, complaining is a waste of time and energy. It's never uh, something reasonable to do. So why, why is complaining so, so a thing that is so uh, common in society nowadays? You know, it, it kind of goes into the bag of uh, vices or, or problems with current day thinking that studying these wise people from hundreds or thousands of years ago uh, helped make more uh, visible, you know, it, it brought these um, errors of modern day or current day thought to the foreground, uh, in my perspective, it helped me realize that a lot of what we think, a lot of what we do with our minds today is wasteful <laughs> it, and it, it doesn't uh, enrich ourselves and doesn't help society in general. So in, in the concept of justice that Plato mentioned, he, he went immediately from the individual to the society to talk about justice, because it's only possible to talk about justice if we talk about a society that is healthy, not just the individual, because that you cannot see an individual in all its dimensions if you don't include the social dimensions as well, and therefore if, if we are polluting our society by complaining, by being angry at others, by discriminating others because of some arbitrary thing that is going on with them, wh where will this lead? Will this lead for a golden age of human prosperity? I, I'm, I don't think so. 
I think we really need to put these uh, things in perspective where reasoning isn't go isn't happening, where irrationality is leading us astray to become aware of it, like shining a very powerful beam on it. <laughs> so if it's wrong, it's going to go away. And we must do that as soon as possible because we have such powerful technology both to do good and to do to do bad so we must get our act straight as soon as possible if we can we can reach for the stars if not probably we won't be around for long <laughs> this, is, this is really uh, a thing about uh, fitness of civilization we need to uh, think about making the individual anti-fragile not just resilient I, I, I advocated resilience you know achieving my mental and physical resilience a long time but it's not enough we must become anti-fragile because sometimes we are called to unlearn some things that we have learned that make no, no more sense no more so that we can replace it with uh, valuable learn lessons that we can apply in the future and in the present because things are changing so so quickly so in a sense the, this kind of uh, challenge that we uh, we face both as individuals that are you know anxious and individuals uh, in, in, in our tendencies we must <laughs> realize that we, we must become aware of that and also in society and civilization uh, more, more broadly, more generally. It's a tough thing to tackle the understanding that we have so many humans who are skewed in the direction of irrationality and how to get them to be aware that there is a brighter side on the other, other, once you pass the river. It's something that I think about often, what put me on this path to look for my higher self. I think eventually I got sick of the, the cycle of irrationality. My mind was operating in a manner where I was judging and wasn't feeling good. I was complaining and the question occurred, there has to be something more. I can't go on living this low quality life absent of reason. What, and I, I began to ask questions, what is my purpose? And it, it can't be just this to sit around in a circle of friends doing drugs and that's all. It has to be something more, but my, my urge to share this with the world, the question arises, how do I allow more people to feel what I felt? The, the sickness of not stability, but, but stagnant living of low frequency, low energy living. There are so many humans I see, whether they are, I like to say NPCs, non-playable characters, they are living a life where there is no reason, but they consume and they don't think. They're told what to think, which is the string pullers, and they're stuck in the cycle where they don't even acknowledge that their strings are being pulled. And that now I, I ponder upon how exactly do I allow these people to come to that awareness that their strings are being pulled, that they are having zero reason. They're living a life of 100% ego and like we spoke upon, it takes a long time for me and you personally to find that higher self. It's not an easy battle. It's an everyday consistent effort 
to consume the right things, to take the proper actions that encourage our higher self to speak and to allow us to notice our higher self rather than that ego. But the, these questions, I believe it all starts with asking. Once you, but before asking, you must become aware. So the, the true question is, how do we bring more awareness to humans who are having their strings pulled? How do we allow them to notice there is more to them, not just their egos, not the religion of materialism, not the consumption of media and processed foods and porn and instant gratification. How do we allow them to see the brighter side? And it's a tough question. It's a deep question with a multitude of answers. But that is the goal, I think. Well, thank you for asking this question because maybe it's one of the most important questions. <clears throat> Considering uh, this kind of path that me and you are, are going through, um, it's really important to uh, ask ourselves, since we already mentioned that we are in a mindset where if we notice someone needing help, we go and help them, you know, we are already there. So, and we, we have also established that a lot of people are waking up every single day and they aren't excited about the new day that they're blessed with you know they they are kind of uh, anxious because they they have a job that they consider terrible that they need to perform they are going to meet people that are uh, impossible to deal with or such so there's a lot of what the ancients called in their time uh, wretchedness you know and slavishness people are are not excited they are not enthused they, they 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 don't feel like the future is going to be awesome uh, just to borrow also wisdom from a, a very a current day uh, person Elon Musk use, uses to say frequently we must f th figure out how to make uh, people wake up in the morning and be excited to be alive you know excited to what they're going to do during the day and it's it's so so important for us that I will try to uh, give my best answer as possible so as we've seen a lot of uh, the people that get more uh, attention nowadays are celebrities uh, movie uh, actors uh, some politicians as well, um, uh, singers, if we see the top 50 of Twitter, it's mostly these people, these, these types of, of people that are uh, the, the most followed accounts. This informs us about si some priorities that, that people have, which is people are very, very appreciative of beauty. People, uh, they, they, people, I think, uh, this is uh, this is my opinion, of course, but I think people experience ugliness on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in general, and so the possibility to go to a concert and see their favorite mu musician or singer or something like that, or see an uh, an epic m movie with their favorite actors that they care a lot about, or seeing sports events with their favorite atle athletes. It really uh, lets these people get out of the ugliness of their life for a little while. And th therefore, people value that a lot. Um, one way for us to um, help rehabilitate society, considering this, um, this pain of ugliness, is to try as much as possible to write the finest poetry to write the greatest songs, to write the most inspiring books, uh, movies, etc., that convey these kinds of ideas that people aren't fixed beings, they can improve daily, they can transcend what they are now, they, they can um, become unrecognizable uh, considering uh, a, short, a relatively short span of time, 
for, for example, in my uh, lifetime, I was mostly uh, a, a kind of uh, an egotistical person until my early 30s. Then I started little by little uh, gaining awareness. And only in the recent two years, I started deliberately learning soft skills like active listening, emotional intelligence, uh, leadership. Leadership is such an important skill for every single human being in this, this planet. Even if they only lead themselves, it's, it goes a long way. Also, this uh, inspired me to realize that maybe these old people that lived millennia ago they still have valuable lessons that although people claim that Aristotle or Marcus Aurelius or Plato deeply influenced, for example, Western society, this may be not, might not be entirely true because they will only influence your life if you make it a point of learning their lessons, you know, learning their wisdom. Otherwise, it's going to be like uh, in a museum uh, outside of society. We must make th this kind of wisdom alive again. If, if we really are dealing with wisdom that, that is uh, valuable to mankind, that will help us. Um, so, therefore, artistic production, deliberate artistic production, and that is why I write as well. Not, I'm not just writing for myself, though it's a big part of that. I make my Twitter as if it's my journal, in part it's for myself because I, I learn things and I write about them in, in my Twitter and also uh, I blog about things, but it's also to in, ho in my hopes to also provide value to someone, to inspire them to become a better version of themselves, you know? I don't want people to follow other people, I want them to figure out how to be a better version of themselves and to lead themselves to, you know, to pick up the reins of their lives. And this is one of the things that the most outstanding leaders in history do. Uh, mediocre leaders, they create followers. Outstanding leaders create other leaders. And, and uh, this is where I'm at and this is where I'm trying to go. Uh, I hope I can have the life in me and the strength to keep on writing, maybe publish books, um, do other collaborations with other artists, uh, what not. I'm open to a lot of things as long as it's, it uh, helps put these kinds of positive ideas in the foreground so that they can out-compete the negativity that is so uh, excessive in our society and at the same time so unnecessary and unproductive. Mm -hmm. So I hope I, I answered your question. Yeah, I, it brings me back to that idea well, we must be grateful for the negativity because without the, I don't want to say evil, but let's say bad, without the bad people who are pulling the strings, we might not have such a strong passion to create the writing, to form new leaders. Rather, I love the point you said about we are not trying to create followers who we, we don't need followers. What we want is to install the power into the individual so that you carry your own responsibility. You're so fully aware of the stream pulling, of the negativity, of the hardships that are not necessary, but in a way, it's an, it's an opportunity for us to become who we are created to be. There is a specific purpose for every individual. And the way that we articulate our uniqueness, we are one of one. There will never be another you or I. But sure, our goals and our passions, our purpose might intertwine. And that is why there is that good and bad. Without the bad, we would not nearly have such a accountability to be our best and to carry our cross. And the, the writing, the reading, the 
exercise, it all intertwines because if we are not taking care of ourselves, fueling our passion, our potential, then we, we fall off and we're not able to create the most beautiful artistic endeavors. And whether it's painting or poetry or singing, as long as the, the outline behind that is not motivation, but true raw inspiration to create your highest self, to be someone of reason, to help other people, rather than judging and being envious. There's so much beauty in our world, but if there wasn't ugly, there wouldn't be beauty. So it, it all comes full circle in this odd way where now we, we completely understand our purpose, which gives us a reason to wake up every day. And sure, even me speaking now, there are still moments, thoughts that come into my head. Oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I feel bad. Yeah, I still am corrupted at times, but the awareness of those thoughts, I can bring that to my forefront of the conscious and notice it, correct it, and regather my focus to be less egotistical and more of a reasonable human, having the big picture always in my mind. That big vision is the key and we have such an opportunity at our hands. I am becoming more shifted. The past year or two, it's been a lot of negativity that's made me realize, okay, I need to accept the responsibility to help others. But now I'm becoming more skewed in the direction that it's going to go our way. There is no other way but us, the goodness, the reason, winning. It's just not going to be an easy, simple battle. But why would we want an easy battle? That would not bring our most appropriate, our highest creations to the surface. So uh, this, this concept is brand new to me, but I really feel deep inside that these negative string pullers are just pushing our best out of us. And the goodness will win. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. We, we must experience life in all its dimensions. If our life were um, a walk in the park, uh, <laughs> full of uh, uh, only nice things, like uh, the initial part of Siddhartha's life was, because he was a prince and his father was overprotective of him, way more overprotective as, as the most helicopter parents uh, in all time that you might, you might think about and imagine about. He basically created a, a very nice uh, golden cage for his, his uh, child, where no elderly person was allowed to enter, no diseased person, no, no one suffering, whatnot. So he was completely, until his early adulthood, completely alienated to suffering, you know? <laughs> so he, he, he only experienced goodness only when he started experiencing suffering in the world, then was when he realized his calling, you know. That, that was the, the, the switch in his life. That was when he realized he didn't want anything to do more with wealth because it wasn't part of his calling. And then he went to, uh, you know, experience suffering. He experienced suffering for long enough to realize it wasn't the way. And then he shifted his uh, um, attention to figuring out how to make suffering something that doesn't need to occur in life. You know, you can just uh, um, embrace some very wise uh, uh, teachings. And although pain is something that is part of a person's life and it's unavoidable, uh, we feel pain because our bodies are designed to feel pain, basically. But we don't need to add any suffering in our imagination to our pains. Uh, it's, it's, once again, it's, it's unnecessary, it's wasteful in terms of our energy. It uh, uh, fetters us and uh, impairs us 
to be uh, in a situation, in a condition to rise up to challenges. And we really need to rise up to a lot of challenges in our day and age. Um, one of the things you, you've, you've said, you know, because of, of saying that uh, we need to experience some badness in our life. I wanted to read a, a quote by Heraclitus, which really puts the uh, hammer on the nail on this, which he, he says, to get everything you want is not a good thing. The disease makes health seem sweet. Hunger leads to the appreciation of being full fed. Tiredness creates the enjoyment of resting. So we, we really need to have in moderation in our life uh, the, the, the different dimensions of human experience. Otherwise, there's certain lessons of practical wisdom we probably won't, won't ever figure out. Another thing that Heraclitus says uh, is that uh, big uh, results require big ambitions. So we, we must try to reach to the stars. Even if we miss the stars, at least we, we hit the planets, you know. So we must aim, aim high. Even Bruce Lee talked about this. Uh, it's, it's, it's only a failure to aim low. <laughs> It's, 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 uh, it's perfectly excusable if you miss when you aim high. If you aim low, that's the, that's the sin. Yeah, that is a great way to sum up our conversation. To both of us, we have high aim. And it is okay to understand this will take time. And... To, to give ourselves appreciation for the mission that we are looking to achieve. If we had a low aim, then there is no, no feeling of struggle. And from our struggles to maintain and actually raise our energy to become the person like Marcus Aurelius or to, to search our, within ourselves to find our, our most valuable way to contribute to humanity. To have these high aims is wonderful. And it's, I would much rather fail at my mission of everything we've conversated upon today than to have no mission at all and to live a life with no aim, just kind of wandering through each day without a big picture vision. We need to have something that is so outside of ourselves that we are working towards because if I'm just living this life so I can have a Lamborghini and a hot girl and not even have the girl for her depth and her, her realness, but just for the outside perception that, oh, he has a Lamborghini and a hot girl. That type of low aim is so corrupt that it doesn't bring your unique, creative, one-of-one -one potential to the surface. But when we're aiming to actually help people to bring the egotistical living to a to a, a, a stop and to raise the frequencies of each individual so that reason is one of our core values to value freedom reason kindness generosity and have empathy for every other human that you see or come across that is a very challenging goal, but at the same time, that it's not worth doing something if it isn't challenging. So the path we're on, everything we've spoken about today, I just feel deep that it will help people. First of all, it helps both of us to have the conversation and to organize our thoughts in a manner where well, now we're clear about what we're doing, why we're doing it, and 
it just starts really with the awareness and the noticing. And from there, you ask yourself questions. So awareness, noticing, questions, and habits. Those are some of the core fundamentals to getting yourself out of a rut. So if you're in a place where you're not feeling good every day, and of course, I don't feel good every day, but the majority of my days, I love this idea, my bad days of the past are so much worse than my bad days today. My, my rough situations now, I can almost correct them quite quickly. Rather, in the past, I would dwell and allow that negative thought cycle to transpire into a full day of negative self-talk. Rather, now with the awareness, you notice it. Okay, what can I learn from the mistake I made? And now get into an active meditation, a true meditation, a journaling session, reading, biking, exercising, just take control of yourself and do, do not play that complainer low frequency role because it, it harms other people and it harms yourself. It's not a win at all. But this conversation was just fantastic. Like we went through a tremendous amount of value. And personally, I just feel like glowing right now. I This was the, a great start to my day. And by having deep conversations, I think that's one of the most innate parts of being a human being. We're supposed to have these intellectual breakdown of our own experiences and to share them with other people. Likewise, Justin, I feel exactly the same. And I, I can fully relate on having my worst days behind me, in a sense, even my worst days of the past few months. Having read these uh, epic philosophers like Marcus Aurelius, it's almost like the wretchedness is starting to gain ground. And then it's as if, uh, and I'm using humor here, which is also a very, very valuable tool to get our, our act together. It's almost like Marcus Aurelius steps, steps uh, out of somewhere and he says enough of this and the wretchedness goes away, or, or go, goes away once again. So I, I only feel a small hint of negativeness, but it, it's, it's all completely overshadowed by, um, by reason, you know. So this is for sure one of the uh, benefits that I, I couldn't imagine in my wildest dreams uh, when I was starting to pick up ancient philosophy. I never thought this, this could, could, uh, could come about it. So <laughs> I was also wanted to put it out there. Also, uh, the ancient philosophers, uh, the Stoics, they were also very well known for their sense of humor. Uh, and uh, if, if something happens to you, Justin, or, or to anyone listening to this, uh, and you can find it in yourself to play about the situation, you will likely lighten your soul and those around you and you will do a great service to your, your group or your community uh, to uh, transcending the situation and, and finding productive uh, solutions. Thank you, Roger. The, everything you've said today, just tremendous insights. I appreciate your time and I wish you an enjoyable day. Likewise, have a, have a great day, Justin. Thank you, my friend.